Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about aggregating data with functions and the group by clause. One of the most important reasons why we're even tracking a database is so that we can figure out some common values or make some sort of calculations based upon that data that help drive our business decisions. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's say that we have a table like this. We have a first name, an age, and a salary column. Now, what if we wanted to know just how many Steves we had in the organization? Well, we could count them. So we could run a count on the first name column and discover that we have two Steves, three Joes, and one Mary. Now, it might not be very PC, but what if we wanted to know the average age of each one of these individuals? So we could find out that the average age of Steve's is 26, where the average age of Joe's is 42, and poor Mary has an average age of 48. And then finally, what if we wanted to know the highest value amongst each one of those Steve's, Joe's, and Mary's? So what is the highest value, the maximum value, of each one of those names. Well, with Steve, the highest salary is $55,000. The highest salary for Joe's is $103,000. And the highest salary for Mary's is $81,000. Now, these are some fairly simple examples, but you can start to imagine that as you apply some of these aggregating functions across all the data in your application, it can start to help drive some of the decisions your company will make. So we've seen some simple examples for three functions, average, count, and max, but there are others. In fact, Access gives us averages, counts, minimum, maximum, sum, first, last, stdev, and var. The AVG function averages the combined values of a column. Count, as we've seen, counts the total number of combined records. So if we wanted to know how many Steve's, Joe's, and Mary's there were, we would use count. Then with min, we find the smallest value in the combined column. So if we wanted to find out the smallest amount that someone was getting paid as a salary, then we would use the min. Whereas we saw the example of a max, which finds the largest value in the combined column. Then there's the sum, which totals all of the values of the combined column and adds them together. Then there's first, which just simply returns the value of the first record within the combined column. And this is really handy because sometimes you only want to return a single value, not necessarily a calculation. And similarly, a last does the same thing, it returns the last value of a combined column. Then we have stdev which actually finds the standard deviation between the values of the combined column. And finally, there's var, which returns the variance between the values of the combined column. Now, those last two are more for statisticians and for data scientists. They're not typically the types of functions that you're going to be running across when you're doing your day-to-day -day SQL queries. But it's good to know that they are there. Let's see how we can apply some of these aggregate functions to our Microsoft Access application that we've been building. So in this video, I'm only going to demonstrate the use of two of our aggregate functions, the average and the count. And what we're going to do is we're going to average out the average salary for each person type. But I also want to know how many of each person type there are. We're going to do that in our query one query that we wrote in an earlier video. So let's just go ahead and double click on that. And we can see that this is actually a join query that gives us the type name, last name, first name, and ID. And that's not really the data that I want. I'm going to go into the design view here for query one. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep the join because that is something I want to do. I want to be able to see the type name of the people type. So I'm just going to swap this around though, because I want to make it look a little nicer and more in line with what we have here. Uh, now, I'm also going to get rid of ID. And this is because what we need to do is we need to group 
these records according to the different columns of similar values. And since ID is always going to be unique, that means we're not really going to be able to group anything because we're always going to get each individual value for each person. In fact, let me just demonstrate that for you so that you can see what the problem is. Now, remember, I wanted to find the average of the salaries of each of the different types of people. So what I want to do is I'm going to first go up to this totals button here and I'm going to click on that. And you'll see that down here, we're going to have a change in the rows that are available. So watch, when I click on totals, we now have this total row, which by default says group by for each one of the columns that we have selected. Now I want to find out what the average salary is. So I'm going to drop that into this row over here, or excuse me, this column over here. And I want to change this from a group by to average or AVG. The other thing I want to do is count each of the people type. Now, actually people type or person type, which is a numerical value on the people table, is also linked directly to people types, which means the type name will be the same for each of the people that have the same type name. So why don't we just go ahead and say type name is going to be a count. So we're going to count how many people have that same type name. Now remember, I said that the ID was going to cause problems because it's going to be a unique value for each person. So how could we group by an ID if each ID is going to be unique? And this gives us the following result. Each one of our users has their own individual value. We're just basically seeing one of each of these types of people. And we're seeing an average salary, which is really just exactly equal to their true salary. So I need to go ahead and get rid of the ID. I'm gonna go back into the design view and I'm just gonna drop this ID column altogether. Now, if I run this again, we're still gonna have the same results. And you might've realized that the same problem that we were having with ID is the same problem we have with first name and last name. These are all unique. These two records or these two columns combined have some sort of uniqueness to them. So I need to also get rid of those. Let's go ahead and take both first name and last name out. Now, if we go ahead and run this again, notice that we have a count of four and an average salary of 62,500. Now, what if we wanna see the type name? Because right now we're getting four, but we don't even know four of what, right? So let's fix that. I'm gonna go back into the design view. And instead of just doing a count on type name, I'm actually gonna drop type name in here again. I'm gonna put it as the first column. So I'm just gonna kind of move it over. And it defaults to having the total set to group by. Now what this will do is it will essentially combine all of the similar values together into a single record. And now when we do run again, we'll see customer and employee. This has severely affected the count of type name and the average salary values. That's because we weren't doing any sort of grouping. We were just getting the total. Whoops, let's go back. I'm gonna go back into the design view. And when we didn't have type name selected and we weren't doing a group by, we weren't grouping according to anything. We were just counting how many different records had a type name. And then we were doing the same thing for average. We were just finding the average of everyone. That is everyone that was in our join table, right? Or a part of our join between the two tables. So we really do need some sort of column to help us group things according to similar values. And now we can see, once again, if we run this, that there are three of the customers in our database and the average salary of those three is $70,000. And then we have one employee as part of this query that has, we only have one of them, and they have an average salary of 40,000. Now this is fine to do in the designer view, and it's pretty simple to use using this total row here to switch things up, but I bet you're kind of curious to see what the SQL looks like. So let's go ahead and right click here in the open area and click on SQL view. And you'll notice that essentially each one of these select fields 
is, uh, is listed here, including the ones that we are counting and the averages. And we've got this function here, which it's a little bit small, but I think you guys can see it says count. And then it has parentheses around the field name that we want to count, which was type name. So we're getting a count of how many type names there are. And then we're doing the same thing with average. We're saying average and then in parentheses, the field that we want to average. You'll also notice that the ones that we're doing a count where we have this function, this aggregate function, is getting this as and then some sort of name. And this is actually what we call aliasing a column. It's a way of renaming a column so that you understand what kind of data it's containing. Now, Access gives us these automatic naming conventions. So we have count of type name and average of salary. And that's certainly helpful, but we could obviously change this if we wanted to. So let's just say average salary. And we'll say count of, or let's say uh, people type. Oop, people type. Looks like I accidentally hit the wrong key. People type count. Let's hit this navigation pane, make that go back over. There we go. Okay, so now we do also have type name. And if you look down here, you'll notice that there is a group by clause now. Notice that we didn't have a group by function around this type name column in our select, but rather we have a group by uh, clause down here at the bottom that has that, uh, that particular field selected. This is how you do a group by. You have a comma separated list of the fields that do not have an aggregate function around them. And if you don't do this, you'll actually run into an error. So if I take this out, we'll just cut that out and try to run this, we'll see your query does not include the specified expression type name as a part of an aggregate function. So if your selected column does not have some sort of function that is being performed on it, or does not have a group by or is not part of the group by clause, then your, uh, your query won't work. So you need to make sure that every column that you have in your select statement is either part of an aggregate function or is mentioned in the group by clause. Now, if we wanted to find instead of the average salary, we wanted to find the maximum salary, we just change average to max and that would give us the highest value of each one of them. So if we try to run this, you'd see the highest salary of, our cust of any of our customers is $85,000. And of course, if we wanted to change this to minimum, we could just do min and that would find us the lowest value, but you probably wanna go through and if you're gonna change the function that's being calculated on that particular column, you probably should change the alias as well, the name that we're giving that column. Because it would be a little confusing if they saw the average was uh, the average salary column showing 50,000 when that's actually the minimum. So be sure that if you're changing your calculations here, the, the functions that you're performing, that you reflect those changes in the name that you're giving that particular column. All right, let's go ahead and save these changes. And I think we're ready to move on. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank the members who have signed up for this channel, uh, Samuel, and I'm, I apologize for right away for how I'm going to pronounce your name, Niketisia Tabiri. Please send me a message on how to pronounce your name. I'd love to know that. I always hate when I'm mispronouncing names. Uh, for Technical, Kanan Krishnan, uh, Rishi, SAA Consulting, Miss uh, Killam Softly. I love that name, Miss Killam Softly, Mrs. Killam Softly. Uh, and Olubayu Olasakan. Uh, I really appreciate all you guys uh, contributing to the channel and being members. Don't forget, if you want to be a member, it's only $5 a month. You get 10% off in our Teespring store on off, the, off all of the merchandise that we have in there. You guys get direct access. You get a form that you can fill out and get direct access to ask me questions uh, that I respond 100% of the time to. So I, I definitely go back and, and chat with you guys. And that's where if you guys are having an issue, a problem that you're encountering, uh, you can ask me about your your a question going on with your application and I respond back and try to help you out as best as I can. So not only do you get that, but you also get access to our membership Q&A sessions. So if you are a member, you get to ask me questions during those special Q&A sessions. 
uh, unlike people who are just you know watching the channel and viewing it. So if you guys are interested, again, all you have to do is just go to my channel, ProgrammingMadeEasy.com, and if you go there, you just click on the Join button, and from there, you guys can go ahead and sign up. So thank you so much, everybody who did sign up and our members. We really appreciate it. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.